really fully express how humbling uh, and how moving it is for me to speak to an audience uh, of people struggling for Israeli democracy, and particularly to speak after uh, a woman who's been a hero of mine uh, for, for most of my life, uh, Naomi Fazan. I know that there are those who have called you traitors for challenging Israeli policy and investigating Israeli abuses during war. And as an American, I can only say this. If you were traitors, then Abraham Lincoln was a traitor during the Mexican-American War when he declared, let us put a check upon this lust for dominion. If you were traitors, then Mark Twain was a traitor when, a, when, a, when he declared that the United States was betraying its anti-imperial heritage by colonizing the Philippines. If you were traitors, then Margaret Chase Smith was a traitor during the deaths of McCarthyism when she declared, the basic principles of Americanism are the right to criticize, the right to hold unpopular beliefs, the right to protest, the right of independent thought. If you were traitors, then John Lewis was a traitor when he marched from Selma to Montgomery and had his head bashed in by Alabama State Police on the Edmund Pettus Bridge. If you were traitors, then Barack Obama was a traitor when in the face of Republican jingoism and Democratic cowardice, he called Iraq a stupid war. That's how I feel as an American. Let me tell you how I feel as an American Zionist, an American who loves Israel. I feel that you in this room may be our last best hope. Today, in the largest diaspora community in the world, the United States, liberal Zionism, a Zionism that loves Israel, not just because it is a Jewish state, but because it's a liberal, democratic Jewish state, is dying. A recent study found that American Jews under the age of 35 were half as likely as American Jews over the age of 65 to say they feel very emotionally attached to Israel. Only 50% of young American Jews said they would consider Israel's destruction a personal tragedy. In 2008, the state senate of, at Brandeis, the only non-sectarian Jewish university in the United States, rejected a resolution commemorating the 60th anniversary of the Jewish state. Partly, this is because of assimilation. But studies show a clear decline in attachment to Israel, even among those young, non-Orthodox American Jews who are not assimilated. The reason, I believe, is that most young American Jews have never been exposed to a Zionism that reflects their liberal, democratic values. They never hear from Israelis who believe passionately in open criticism, nonviolence, and human rights. Think about the politically significant relationships that exist between Israelis and American Jews today. First, there is what you might call the Macher to Macher relationship. American Jewish organizations fly their big donors to Israel where they meet with Israel's top generals and politicians. Such meetings are the lifeblood of organized American Zionism. American Jewish groups require this access to the Israeli government for their very existence. And the only way to secure it is to avoid publicly criticizing Israeli policy. As a result, America's major Jewish groups praise Israel's commitment to democracy, human rights, and territorial compromise, but will not defend those values when they are threatened. The Zionism of the American Jewish mockers is basically derivative, a function of whatever Israeli policy happens to be at the time. Thus, American Jewish groups defend the Netanyahu government when it refuses to allow toys and notebooks into Gaza, and then praise the Netanyahu government when it allows toys and notebooks into Gaza. They say a settlement freeze is unnecessary because the settlements are not a real obstacle to peace, and then cite a settlement freeze as evidence of the Israeli government's commitment to peace. American Jewish groups invoke Israeli democracy the way the Bush administration invoked American democracy while it was sanctioning torture, as a way to deflect criticism, as a public relations strategy. The less democratic Israeli behavior becomes, the more American Jewish groups will excuse that behavior by citing Israeli democracy. Not Israeli democracy as a value, not Israeli democracy as a moral commitment, but Israeli democracy as an alibi. 
What Israelis may not fully appreciate is that this American Jewish establishment is in slow collapse. It is rooted in an American Jewish identity that increasingly no longer exists. For its members, who are mostly secular, Israel, often in conjunction with the Holocaust, serves as a substitute for Jewish identity, for, as, a, as a substitute for religious observance. This identity was formed in large measure in the late 1960s and 1970s, in the run-up to the Six-Day War, when American Jews were galvanized by the fear that Israel might be destroyed, and in the aftermath of the Yom Kippur War, when the UN passed the Zionism Equals Racism Resolution. Because their Zionism is rooted in an earlier era, before Israel became a regional superpower, these older American Jews are inclined to see Israel as forever on the knife edge of extinction, and thus to view moral considerations as a luxury Israel cannot afford. And because their Zionism is rooted in an earlier era, they largely identify with a country that no longer exists. They fell in love with an Israel that had not yet been shaped by the theology and politics of occupation, with an Israel in which the Haredim were a much smaller percentage of the population with an Israel that had not yet experienced the Russian immigration that produced a Vigdor Lieberman. One of the major functions of the American Jewish establishment is to reassure its members that this Israel still exists. To listen to the leaders of the organized American Jewish community is to hear about an imaginary Israel in which leaders of all ideo ideological stripes cherish free speech and the rule of law and yearn for a Palestinian state. If American Jewish organizations acknowledge that there are any illiberal authoritarian currents in Israel at all, they insist that they are merely the byproduct of the actions of Israel's adversaries. In this Epcot Israel, Shas and Avigdor Lieberman and the Yesha Council do not exist. This imaginary Zionism has little appeal for a generation of young, relatively secular American Jews with a keen eye for inauthenticity. A generation for whom the most influential American Jew is John Stuart Leibowitz, better known as John Stewart, a man <laughs> whose own detached and ironic relationship to Israel is a good barometer of their own. So the Mocker to Mocker relationship is less and less representative of American Jewry. But there is a second Israeli American Jewish relationship that does enjoy rising influence amongst a segment of the American Jewish young. You might call it the hyper-nationalist to hyper-nationalist relationship. Its main interlocutors are the national religious in Israel and their modern Orthodox counterparts in the United States. Among modern Orthodox Jews in the United States, Zionism is alive and well. The statistics are actually quite stunning. According to a 2006 survey by the American Jewish Committee, while only 16% of non-Orthodox American Jews between the ages of 18 and 40 said they feel very close to Israel. Amongst Orthodox American Jews in the same age group, the figure is 79%. New York's Israel Day Parade, which was once a fairly secular affair, is now dominated by yeshiva kids. The percentage of American Jews who are Orthodox is growing fast, and as a result, we are in the midst of a massive generational transition in which Zionism as a substitute for religious observance is being replaced by Zionism as an outgrowth of religious observance. There is a lot to admire in the American modern Orthodox Jewish community. 